myself Shilpi Banerjee will be today discussing about introduction to enzyme kinetics. Well, enzyme kinetics is a fundamental branch of biochemistry that focuses on studying the rates and mechanisms of enzyme catalyzed reactions. Enzymes are nothing but biological catalyst that accelerate chemical reactions going inside different living organisms enabling essential processes such as their metabolism, digestion and DNA replication. Understanding enzyme kinetics is very important for unraveling the intricate molecular processes that drives our life. Now, let us see what are basically enzymes. Enzymes are nothing but remarkable biological molecules that serve as catalyst orchestrating and accelerating essential chemical reactions within living organisms as mentioned earlier. So, these specialized proteins play a very pivotal role in enabling various biological processes to occur at rates suitable for life. Enzymes are fundamental components of metabolism, digestion, cellular signaling and countless other vital functions. Enzymes accelerate chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy which is required for different reactions to take place inside living organism. This acceleration occurs without being consumed or altered during the reaction. They exhibit remarkable substrate specificity which means that they are highly selective in the molecules they interact with. Each enzyme typically interacts with a specific substrate just like every specific key has specific lock that is a key fitting into a proper lock. Enzymes possess a region known as the active site. This is the place where substrates bind and chemical transformations take place. So, this site has precisely shaped region or pocket that accommodates the substrate molecular structure. So, when an enzyme binds to its substrate at the active site an enzyme substrate complex or ES complex forms. Within this complex the enzyme facilitates the conversion of substrate molecules into different required products. Enzyme activity can be regulated to maintain homeostasis. Regulatory mechanisms include allosteric regulation, covalent modification and feedback inhibition. Some enzymes require additional non-protein molecules which are known as cofactor or coenzymes which function which help in functioning optimal for the overall enzyme functioning. So, basically these molecules assist in enzyme substrate interactions. Now, let us look into the structures of enzyme. Enzymes as mentioned are intricate biological catalyst possess complex three dimensional 3D structures that are very important for their function. So, their structure arrangement enables them to interact specifically with substrate and facilitate chemical reactions within different living organisms. The structure of enzyme consists of several key elements. Number 1 primary structure this refers to the linear sequence of amino acid in its polypeptide chain. This sequence basically helps in dictating the overall structure and function of an enzyme. Next secondary structure, enzymes commonly adopt secondary structure like alpha helicals and beta sheet which results from hydrogen bonding between the adjacent amino acid present in the polypeptide chain tertiary structure. 
this involves the three dimensional folding of the polypeptide chain driven by interaction such as hydrophobic interaction, hydrogen bonding and disulfide bond. One more structure that is quaternary structure. So, name itself suggests that there must be there has to be some four layer bonding between the structures right. So, some enzymes have multiple polypeptide subunits. The arrangement of these subunits in the quaternary structure further contributes to the enzymes overall functionality. Now, there is a term known as active site. So, as mentioned this active site is specific region within the enzyme structure where substrates bind. This site is often characterized by a highly precise arrangement of amino acid that facilitate substrate recognition and catalysis. Allosteric sites some enzymes have specific site which is different from the active site which are known as allosteric site where molecules can bind and help in regulation of enzyme activity. Now, I would here like to mention that the two models lock and key and the induced fit model where the first model which was introduced to explain the concept of enzyme. The lock and key model is a very simple analogy which is used to describe the specificity of enzyme substrate interaction. This was proposed by Emil Fischer in 1894 where the model is used to illustrate how enzymes recognize and bind to specific substrate just like a lock fitting precisely with its corresponding key. As mentioned earlier the induced fit model is a refined and dynamic concept that enhances our understanding of enzyme substrate interaction beyond the original lock and key model. This was proposed as an alternative by Daniel Koshland in 1958 which helps in acknowledging that both the enzyme and substrate undergo conformational changes upon binding ensuring optimal fit for catalysis. Now, let us look into about factors different factors which affect the enzyme activity. Enzyme activity is basically the rate at which enzymes catalyze chemical reaction and they are influenced by a variety of factors. These factors can either enhance or inhibit enzyme activity impacting the overall efficiency of biochemical processes. Some of the key factors which affect enzyme activity are as follows. Number 1 temperature. Enzyme activity generally increases with temperature as higher temperature provides more energy for molecules to react. However, excessively high temperature can denature enzymes in turn making them inactive. Each enzyme has an optimal temperature at which it functions in best condition. Next factor is pH. Enzymes also have an optimal pH range at which they are the most active. Changes in pH can alter the ionization state of amino acid residues in the enzyme active site which in turn affects its shape and ability to bind to the substrate. Next factor is substrate concentration. Enzyme activity increases with increasing substrate concentration up to a certain point. At low substrate concentration there might be excess enzyme molecules compared to substrate leading to increased activity as more substrate bind to available active site. However, once all the active site are occupied further increase in substrate concentration may not, not result in any increase further. This 
may make the enzyme saturated. Next factor which affects the enzyme activity is the concentration of enzyme. Higher the concentration of enzyme, more active site will be available for substrate binding which leads to increased reaction rate until the substrate concentration becomes limiting. Next factor are cofactors and coenzymes. Many enzymes require additional non-protein molecules known as cofactor or coenzymes to function properly. These molecules can be metal ions, let us say magnesium or zinc or small organic compound example vitamin that assist in catalytic processes going inside different living organism. Next factor which affects the enzymatic activity are inhibitors. So, basically inhibitors are those molecules which can either decrease or completely halt enzyme activity. Competitive inhibitors compete with the substrate for the active site binding whereas, non-competitive inhibitors bind to different site on the enzyme in turn which results in altering the shape and reducing the enzymatic activity. Next factor is activator. So, now activators are molecules that enhance the activity of enzyme. They bind to the enzyme and increase its affinity for the substrate leading to more efficient catalysis. Next salt concentration, ions present in the surrounding environment can affect enzyme activity. High salt concentration can disrupt enzyme substrate interaction or even alter the structure of enzyme. Next factor which helps in determining the enzymatic activity is structure of enzyme. Enzyme structure especially the shape of active site plays a very important role for substrate binding and catalysis. Any mutation or change in the structure of enzyme uh, can lead to any change in the activity or it can either slow down anything can happen which might not be desirable. Next factor is enzyme denaturation. Enzymes can denature due to extreme condition such as high temperature or extreme pH level. Denaturation leads to change in the shape of enzyme thus in turn making it completely non-functional. Next factor is substrate specificity. Enzymes have varying degrees of specificity for this substrate. Some enzymes are highly specific and only catalyze one reaction while others can catalyze multiple reaction. So, understanding these factors and how they interact is very important for optimizing enzyme driven process in various fields including medicine, industry and research. Enzyme kinetic as mentioned previously is the study of the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction and the factors that influence those rate. It provides insight into how enzyme function, how they interact with the substrate and inhibitors and how their activity can be quantitatively described. Enzyme kinetic is commonly described using different mathematical models which help to predict and analyze the behavior of enzyme catalyzed reaction. Before going into the details of enzyme kinetics, let us first quickly go through some basic concept and terms related to it. The very first term is Michaelis Menten equation. This is basically the most fundamental equation used in enzyme kinetics that describes the relationship between the initial reaction rate and the substrate concentration which is which can be expressed as V is equal to V max multiplied by substrate S divided by Michaelis constant K m plus substrate. V max is the maximum reaction rate where all enzyme active sites are saturated with substrate whereas K m is the Michaelis constant 
a measure of the enzyme's affinity for the substrate. The next term is enzyme substrate complex that is ES. So, when a substrate molecule binds with the active site of an enzyme, it leads to formation of ES that is enzyme substrate complex. This complex is a crucial intermediate in the catalytic process. Next term is line weaver Burke plot. Now, this is also very very common and familiar meaningful term which is used to describe the enzymatic activity, the enzymatic kinetics. So, the line weaver Burke plot is a graphical representation of Michaelis Menten equation when it is transformed into a linear form. It provides a way to determine V max and K m from straight line plot. Next term is allosteric enzyme. These enzymes have multiple binding sites and their activity can be regulated by binding of molecules at other sites irrespective of active site. Next term which we will be accustomed while uh, going through the kin enzyme kinetics is inhibition. So, inhibition means halting you are stopping something right. So, enzyme activity can be inhibited by various factors. Competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition are the two main terms which will be commonly seen while studying enzyme kinetics. Competitive inhibitors compete with the substrate for the active site whereas, non-competitive inhibitors bind to a different site on an enzyme altering its conformation and activity. Next term which we will be seeing is enzyme activation. Enzyme activity can be enhanced by using allosteric activators or post translational modification such as phosphorylation. Next is enzyme inactivation. So, the word itself explains very clearly that enzymes can be inactivated through the process of denaturation, competitive inhibition or non-competitive inhibition. Next term is initial velocity which is represented by V O. The initial rate of reaction measured at the beginning of the reaction when substrate concentration changes are negligible is represented as V O or you can say V 0. Studying enzyme kinetics helps researchers to understand the mechanism of enzyme, design experiments, optimize enzyme based process and develop drugs that target specific enzymes involved in disease. It also provides a quantitative framework for analyzing enzymatic reaction in various biological, medical and industrial context. Now, let, let us look into Michaelis Menten kinetics. This kinetic is a model of enzyme kinetic which explains how the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction depends on the concentration of enzyme and its substrate. Let us consider a reaction in which a substrate S binds reversibly to an enzyme E to form an enzyme substrate complex ES which in turn reacts irreversibly to form a product P and release the enzyme again. This same thing has been shown in this pictorial representation. E plus S when formed together they result in the formation of E S complex. Combined irreversibly they result in the formation of enzyme plus product. To derive the Michaelis Menten equation there are certain principle which is very important. Number 1, for a given initial concentration of substrate, the initial rate of product formation is proportional to the total concentration of enzyme. Next principle is, at low concentration of substrate, the rate of product formation varies linearly with substrate concentration. Next principle is, when the concentration of substrate is high, the rate of product formation becomes independent of substrate concentration reaching a maximum value that is V max. 
the Michaelis Menten equation is expressed as V0 is equal to V max multiplied by S divided by Km plus S. This equation describes how the initial rate of reaction that is V is affected by the initial substrate concentration S. It assumes that the reaction is in steady state where the enzyme substrate concentration remains constant. When a graph of substrate concentration is plotted against the rate of reaction, we can see from the graphical representation that how the rate of reaction initially increases rapidly in a linear fashion as substrate concentration increases. This is basically nothing but first order kinetics. The rate then plateaus as you can very clearly see and increasing the substrate concentration has no of effect on the reaction velocity as all enzyme active sites are already saturated with the substrate. So, this is basically nothing but zero order kinetics. This plot of the rate of reaction against substrate concentration has the shape of a rectangular hyperbola. However, a more useful representation of Michaelis Menten kinetic is, is a graph which is known as line weaver Berg plot, which plots the inverse of reaction rate that is 1 by r against the inverse of substrate concentration that is 1 by s. Now, let us look into enzyme kinetic graphs and inhibitors. So, as mentioned earlier competitive inhibitors impair the reaction process by binding to an enzyme often at the active site and preventing the real substrate from binding. Whereas, non competitive inhibitors do not prevent the substrate from binding to the enzyme. In fact, the inhibitor and the substrate do not affect each other's binding to the enzyme at all. So, if we want to show the effect of competitive inhibitor and non competitive inhibitor on a graph, we get the following results. As you can see from the graphical representation, with a competitive inhibitor, the reaction can eventually reach the normal V max, but of course, this would take a higher concentration of substrate to reach that point. Whereas, with non competitive inhibitor, the reaction can never reach to the normal V max, regardless how much amount of substrate we keep on adding. Now, let us see some of the applications of enzyme kinetic. Number one is drug development. So, enzymes are often targeted in drug development both as therapeutic targets and for designing enzyme inhibitor. Enzyme kinetic studies help identify potential drug candidates, assess their efficacy and predict their interaction with enzymes in the body. Next application is study of enzyme inhibition. Enzyme kinetics provide a framework for understanding how inhibitors interact with enzyme. This information is crucial for developing drugs that selectively inhibit specific enzymes involved in disease such as for HIV treatment. Next application is enzyme activation. Enzyme can be activated for specific application for example, in laundry detergent and food processing under specific condition. Next application is biocatalysis and green chemistry. Enzymes are used as catalyst we very well know in biocatalytic process for environmentally friendly production of chemicals and pharmaceuticals. They can also help in optimizing reaction condition to maximize yield and efficiency while minimizing waste. Next application is in enzyme engineering. Enzyme kinetic information helps in guiding how enzyme engineering can be used to create variants with improved properties. These engineered enzymes can have enhanced stability, substrate specificity or catalytic activity making them valuable tools in various application. Next application is diagnosis. 
enzymes are often used as biomarker for diagnosing disease. Studying the kinetics of specific enzyme in blood or other samples can provide insight into the presence and progression of certain disorders. Next application is in the field of pharmacokinetics. Enzyme kinetics plays a role in understanding how drugs are metabolized in the body. Enzyme catalyzed drug metabolism affects drug concentration over time influencing the dosage and therapeutic outcomes. Next is immobilization. So, immobilizing enzymes on solid support is useful for continuous processing in industrial application. Enzyme kinetics studies help to determine the optimal condition for immobilizing while preserving their activity. Next application is designing of enzyme inhibitor. So, by studying enzyme kinetic it helps in designing inhibitor with high selectivity and potency which is particularly important in developing treatment for conditions like cancer and neurodegenerative diseases. Next is in different industrial process. Enzymes are used in various industrial process such as food production, brewing, biofuel production, textile manufacturing and many others. So, understanding enzyme kinetics it helps in optimizing these process for efficiency. Enzyme kinetic is also helpful in biomedical research to understand various cellular processes and metabolic pathways going inside living organism. Last but not the least enzyme kinetic is also very much helpful in agricultural application such as in production of fertilizer, pesticide and animal feed. Enzyme kinetics helps to develop more effective and environmentally friendly solution. Overall on a concluding note as we have seen that enzymes are very important for different reactions going inside us. So, the nature of enzyme substrate its active site how they interact what is their importance their application everything can be understood by studying enzyme kinetic. So, basically enzyme kinetic is a fundamental tool which provides us information related to function of enzyme their regulation their application in so many diverse field be it duct designing, be it pharmacokinetics, be it agriculture, be it biomarkers, be it food, be it anything. So, its wide ranging application contribute to advancement in various scientific, medical and industrial field which will in turn help us in better understanding control and utilization of enzymatic reaction inside us. Co the inhibition both competitive and non-competitive how it can be regulated, how it can be applied everything has its own significance. So, by understanding first the basis of Michaelis Menten equation enzyme kinetics can be studied very fundamentally into a better way. So, thank you everyone. I hope the introductory insight which was provided to you all about enzymes, their types by factors affecting the enzymatic activity, enzymatic application, Michaelis Menten equation, line weaver plot everything has been clearly understood.